Welcome to Biblical Christian Content, where we like to keep the content biblical. Let's go. This obliterates the line of clarity and invites the enemy into the camp and just devastates the church. And the church not only lacks discernment, but lacks the will to be discerning. But of all of the issues that are important, there is one that is at the top of the list. If we're going to be discerning about anything, there is one thing we have to be discerning about, and it's this, who is a Christian? That's the most critical one of all. That is the most critical issue of all. At the top of my list in this matter of being discerning is we need to know who the true Christians are, because if we don't, then we've invited the enemy into the camp. Now, I've been all over the world, as you know, and I've had lots of discussions with lots of Christian leaders, and I've read lots of things about the church and the history of the church and the theology of the church. I've been all over everywhere, and I can just tell you this. Right now, in this day, and it's been this way uh, for a long time through this 20th century, the biggest problem in the church is its inability and unwillingness to distinguish true Christians from false. It's one thing for them to believe it, it's something else for Billy Graham to say the Pope is a fine, outstanding Christian, something else for him to hold an evangelistic meeting and invite all the Catholics to cooperate. It's something else for Bill Bright to say that the Pope is a fine, outstanding Christian. It's something else for people in the ECT, the people who are in Christian leadership in America, to embrace the Roman Catholics and say, we all love the same Christ, we all serve the same God in the same way, and these are all our Christian brothers and sisters. It's one thing for the, these institutions to exist, it's something else for those people who are Christians to embrace them as if they're all true Christians. This obliterates the line of clarity and invites the enemy into the camp and just devastates the church. You can turn on your television and watch TBN. Everybody that comes on is embraced as a Christian, even though it's just, just filled with false teachers and people who obviously haven't been delivered. It's the idea that anybody who believes in Jesus is a Christian. And if you want to push the point beyond that, you're somehow a problem and you're divisive and schismatic. This is deadly stuff. And now you even have evangelical churches that are designing their churches to make unbelievers comfortable. This is frightening stuff. And I guess I feel at this point, I've got nothing to lose anyway. I need to, I have to, I have to be accountable to the Lord. It's just time to stand up and, and say, this, this has got to be brought to the test of Scripture. You can have a thing called Amsterdam 2000, you can have 5,000 so-called evangelists there and celebrate all this unity, but who's finding out whether these people are Christians? They come from Catholicism and Orthodox groups and fringe groups and all kinds of strange groups and even some cults. I talked to a man even this week who said he, th he thinks there's going to be many Mormons in heaven. This is continuing to escalate, and I guess it's time to just stand up and say that there has to be a line drawn. The issue of who is truly a Christian is at the very center of the church's life and ministry. This has to be protected. There isn't any fellowship between light and darkness, is there? Second Corinthians 6. There isn't any concord between Christ and Satan. Two can't walk together unless they be what? Agreed. You have to come out from among them and be separate and touch not the unclean thing. And here is the church absorbing all of this. And now it's so confusing that the church itself doesn't even know who's a Christian, and frankly, I don't think they particularly care as long as you say you believe in Jesus.